Welcome to my channel, Waiting on Parts. On today's episode, we revisit the 10 mile an hour kayak and see if we can't get more speed out of it. I modify the transom, upgrade the steering servos, and build a new steering assembly and show you how I did it. It's been a while since I posted anything boating related. Our local government has made our favorite fishing spot, Crescent Moon Island, a bird sanctuary. They put up signs and we stopped taking the kayak out. This is the old steering assembly. It was pretty crude, and I thought I could do better by making it a one piece and allowing the steering brake to be functional in case of emergencies. Despite how crappy it looks, the only thing that broke on the steering assembly was this triangle piece that popped out after I threw the motor in my van. So here's the new version of my steering assembly. It looks better, it has a functional steering brake, and a one-piece assembly makes it fail-proof. Let's say you're fishing and you drop your radio in the water. And you need a, you need a way to control your boat. Um, every time you throttle it up, this motor is going to turn to the right. It's gonna, and the steering, the servo is not going to hold it. Every time you throttle it up, it's going to move to the right. It puts some tension on it, but not enough. This motor is, puts out a lot of torque. So what you're going to need to do is lock the steering. So you remove this. Take this pushing out. And put the lock back in. When this bottom is out, it pushes up against the shaft. The propulsion shaft and it keeps the steering from keeps you from steering it. So now it's locked. And you would use, you would just open this up and hit the throttle forward a little bit, slow speed, and then control the boat with an oar. At this point I show you how I made the steering assembly. So the original 65 kilogram servo, 7.4 volts, that I used to control my small 1800 watt trolling motor, worked beautifully for years, but when I upgraded the motor to the new 3200 watt one, it wasn't able to keep up. Under full acceleration, the 3200 watt motor would overpower the old 65 kilogram servo. I decided to use the largest servo I could find for this new 5 horsepower 3200 watt motor. It was 12 volts, 150 kilograms, and it controlled the larger motor just fine. The new 150 kilogram servos are 12 volt units, uh, which required a receiver upgrade to handle the 12 volt power. The new 150 kilogram servos required 12 volts, so a whole new radio and receiver was required to handle increased voltage. Making the steering assembly, I started with a cardboard template. I made sure the template fits snugly over the original steering assembly that came with the motor. Once I had two pieces of matching marine board, I clamped them to glued them together and clamped them overnight, put blue tape on them and uh, traced the template onto the blue tape. I then drilled holes in the blue tape and cut out the holes with a jigsaw and carefully opened up the holes with a trim sander. One thing to remember is you don't want this opening to be sloppy fitting. It needs to be a press fit. You need to be careful not to open up the hole too large. It should take some force to get in over the original steering assembly when done. So take your time, don't take too much off, and uh, be patient. At this point I recess the bottom of the new assembly to clear the original motor mounts. Here I'm shaping my new steering assembly. It's mostly just cosmetic, so it doesn't appear so boxy. But the taper on the rear of the assembly is to clear the original motor mounts when the motor is in the up position.
This is the plate that the servo mounts to. I glue it to the main body, but the long 3 inch screws is what really holds the servos to the main assembly. At this point I make a tape dam for the glue. I'm going to fill all these voids up with uh, goop or similar type of glue. After years of screwing around with marine board, I've come to the conclusion that goop or similar glues that are flexible are the best for this type of application. Uh, the epoxies work okay, but uh, flexibility is uh, Here you can see the angle on my transom is excessive. I was thinking maybe the access angle is pushing down on the nose, hurting the speed, so I tried uh, taking a half inch off of the, the backboard here and uh, taking an inch off the top to get the propeller down the water a little lower. But, the, but taking the angle off the transom hopefully helped with the speed, but we'll see. So this is the glue I used four years ago, and it's still holding really well. It actually took a lot of force to get off. I had to make my own motor mount for this Cobra tandem because the original motor mount was no longer sold. Here I make a dam to catch the glue. There's only one hole below the water line. And I made sure to fill it with glue and, uh, and then put a large screw in it. Okay, so this is the 48 volt relay. Once the kill switch is turned on, this allows current, this completes a circuit in here, allows current to flow into the kill switch and tells it to turn on the motor. So now the control has juice and uh, it's also saying 12, 12, 40 volts to a buck inverter, which is converting the voltage down to 12 volts for the receiver. So the receiver is the throttle, the throttle. Steering with the nail. Now if I'm cruising along in the water and I fall off the boat, the motor instantly dies because I pulled the cord off of the kill switch. So this works by, there's a little magnet in here and there's apparently some sort of pickup right there. It's 
see this little pickup. It almost looks like a tape head. And the wire. Just three connectors. So I'm going to chop it off right here and make it cleaner. Okay, so I sawed the handle off. The, there was a handle here and I just sawed it off. Put a screw in it. Behind here is a little magnet, a little sensor that picks up the signal from the magnet, determines where, where this one is at. I'm gonna wrap a zip tie around here and glue it on. I don't want this thing to fall apart in the ocean and be stuck with no throttle. I love the torque from the electric motor. It gets you up to speed in no time. So as far as speed goes, I only got up to 10 miles an hour. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, my modifications didn't make it go any faster, but I do have steering now. And, uh, so, but I do have plans for you guys. I'm thinking of doing something crazy, maybe my dumbest invention yet, actually. I want to put uh, some linear actuators and uh, skis under the kayak and turn it into a little hydrofoil. We'll see how it turns out. At this point I did a little durability test. I went from one end of Mission Bay to the other. It took about an hour. It was about 10 miles at top speed. Okay, so the temp is, oh shit, 150. Hello. So after this I googled what's a safe temperature for an engine control unit on a brushless motor and they said uh, 200 is safe operating temperature so I'm gonna leave the engine control unit module in the box this is one of the four linear actuators that are gonna lift the skis out under the boat Eventually, if this actually works, I'm going to have to change to hydraulics. But temporarily using linear actuators just to see if this even works. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a stupid plan. So right now I have $25 invested in uh, some Facebook market skis. And uh, I have about 200 bucks invested in some linear actuators. Waterproof but I doubt they'll last very long. Like, subscribe, we'll see how it turns out. Thanks for watching.